Right. Hey man, thanks for coming out and uh, to talk to us. So, but before we jump in, just tell the people what you're actually doing. All right. So I'm Val, uh, originally from Germany, moved to Botswana when I was quite young, before having really studied anything actually. And since then started working with this guy over here a little bit and on his field uh, trips for some research stuff. I've been working in the tourism industry and for the last sort of nine, ten years actually, I've been running my own project looking after problem animals, problem predators in the Kalahari. I've been running a volunteer program there um, where, yeah, just to earn a bit of money and yeah, that's been going on for the last ten years and for the last four we've relocated to our new location and we're rebuilding an entire new project about community education. Uh, awareness about our environment and problem animals. So uh, problem animals, problem animals is the word of the day so to say. So uh, since most of our audience is American and actually even more so most of them live in cities unlike you that lives in the middle of nowhere and uh, there aren't that many problems with animals. Yeah, there is the occasional raccoon raiding a trash can, but uh, I believe literally the problems out here might be a little bit more bigger and to some extent a little bit more dangerous. Why don't you explain something about the actual concept of what a problem animal is and uh, what that means for people on the ground, especially here in Botswana? Yeah, so problem animal I mean, by definition, basically any animal that interferes in a negative way with human livelihoods and the economical benefit, uh, which is fairly minimal in, in many ways in Botswana, especially in the rural communities that are living closest to these to these problem animals. And we have a range of animals that, yeah, exactly, not just a raccoon that raids a trash can, lions, leopards, cheetahs, all the, the predators that are actually taking livestock and anything from a, a big cow, fully grown cow, a, a lions can come in and take a, an entire herd of cattle out in a, in a couple of weeks. And not just the predators, I mean it ranges even crocodiles and things like that which are danger to especially people's lives just by standing on the water. Many people don't have access to water at their houses which means washing and stuff like that happens at a river and crocodiles and hippos are not very pleasant to be around when you're trying to just pick up a bit of water for the household and then there's another big issue which is the destruction of crops of, of little farmlands often which is just not even for for a huge economic benefit it's just for their livelihood it's just what people need to actually survive that that season and one elephant will be enough to go into that family's field for example and and rip out everything that they planted which obviously creates huge problems for these people and yeah from elephants through hippos, crocodiles, lions, leopards, cheetahs, we have a hell of a big range of these animals that are causing damage. Okay, so I've been teaching conservation related subjects for quite some time now and uh, a question that always pops up is what can be done about it? What I mean, obviously, these animals are part of these environments. I'm pretty sure there is a crocodile lurking here somewhere and uh, probably in about 45 minutes some hippo is going to come out of the water and uh, going to harass us, or we are harassing a hippo. But what, ca what can be done about this? I mean, especially in your environment down there, what can be done if some lion comes and eats my cow and how often does this actually occur? Is this once off or does this happen all the time? Yeah, so number one, it's not just a once off thing in, in these rural areas, especially the ones near the wildlife areas like our parks, which are massive in Botswana. We have very big spaces left which are designated wildlife areas. but. It happens all the time. Lions are a daily issue in, in these areas, especially where, where I'm based. Uh, up here near the water, it's more the elephants, which are a constant issue with absolutely without a break. So it's something that's part of, of this life for the people here every day. It's nothing like, oh, once a year it's a, a cow gets eaten. If you are in these areas, it's a daily threat and you have to watch for your livestock on a, on a daily basis otherwise something is going to happen and there's not a hell of a lot you can do if you're riding on horseback and a, a pride of lions walk, walks into your area you basically on your hide in your hut and hope for the best yeah. so 
Yeah, that's it's a big problem. What the people can do at the moment is uh, a couple of reimbursement schemes, which are not enough, and they're not replacing the actual value that they've lost. Uh, at the same time, the problem animal will get removed, so we don't want it there. So re reimbursing, and basically we can then say, why don't we just get rid of all the wild animals that are causing problems and we save the money because in the end we're looking at a production that we want to create for these people so if they can't sell that cow somebody still has to pay for it and if it doesn't end up in the supermarket as an actual product that's a problem we're not going to create an economy that's viable so there needs to be a bit of a change for for an actual benefit and i think that's where the, the big issue comes in something that i never understood coming here completely just say let's call it national geographic geographic educated and absolute nothing on the ground and you just think, oh, we're just going to save the lines. There's plenty of space. We're going to, you know, help the people by removing the lines, catching problem animals, and relocating them into new areas. Uh, reality is, we don't have those new areas. People are encroaching into this last wild spaces, and we need to find a way to to make that work together. Which probably will only work if the rural communities start benefiting of these animals rather than just having damage created. So even in a country like Botswana or the continent of Africa, there is, is not sufficient space left to relocate these animals? Yeah, it's a good point. So it's a little more complicated than, yeah, than it's, it sounds. There is a huge amount of space left in Botswana specifically. We have parks and wildlife management areas that are the size of countries in Europe, just in this country. So space-wise, yes, there is a lot left. The, the bigger issue is that that space has become more and more fragmented by human development. Roads that have been put through these spaces to create access, um, which helps people, but at the same time it creates areas where now access created means people move there, they're starting to utilize the land nearby. Everywhere where there's water easily available has been occupied by us, and we've actually additionally onto, onto that to prevent foot and mouth disease from spreading mainly, have, have put huge fences into the way of what used to be natural migration routes for our wild herbivores. So if we're looking at lions, for example, as just calling this now an example species of these problem animals, we've lost about 90% of the lion's prey, simply because there is space, there is biomass available, those animals could be eating, which Botswana has a very unique potential in that case, because we have a low human population and big spaces left, which are very open. But the ability for these herbivores to survive has been very, very limited because the water provided in these areas is not necessarily the, the best quality, which means they don't do well, the big migration completely stopped. So they don't have the ability to move the way they're supposed to. It's always related to water, even if it's not permanent water. The Kalahari species need to move huge distances in order to survive. And that's pretty much been destroyed in a way over the last decades since, say, the 1950s. And looking at a lion today, we simply have lost 90% of our lion population because it's actually okay. going on in the palm tree. Now, because we, we've lost 90% of their prey, so simply speaking, there's absolutely no point breeding lions, catching lions and releasing them back into an area where they've just been chased off by the last lions living there because the space is the space is available but for lion space means you need to have a lot of food food's not available anymore so the lions territories grow much bigger and there's less space for them so we have nowhere to put these problem animals when we catch them in these areas so there's a a massive change in, in thinking that needs to happen in general for people to understand that the issues are not what seems to be apparent when we're watching television. It's something completely different. And the communities here, I mean, Botswana manages to feed 3 million cattle with water, which is something that also happened in that same 50 years. So we have the ability for something that people benefit from to, to make amazing things happen. 3 million cattle could probably be feeding, I would reckon, at least 10 million wildebeest. That's, we couldn't even fit that into the country. So the the resources are here, the question is, are people in Botswana willing to, to put that effort in and to make these animals stick around? And that's where the whole thing of, of economical benefit comes in. And simply speaking, people here have zero benefit 
to an extent we have tourism areas like the Okavango Delta where it's a little bit different but the vast majority of the country wildlife is just a nonsense without any point for the people and no way they can profit from it which means when it comes it's considered a pest you want to get rid of it and yeah nobody wants to look after it. So in your opinion how are we going to solve it? What needs to happen? What needs to change? What options are there? What chances are out there? And what are the challenges that come with finding solutions to this? Yeah, the big challenge is always money, funding, uh, getting the resources. But then again, a lot of funding is actually being put out there, in my opinion. And it's a little bit questionable whether it's all used the right way because there are millions and millions of dollars flowing into Botswana alone, for example, in, in many projects that are all claiming to do something and I believe that every single one of them has the right intention but to be quite frank if somebody would have given me funding when I was brand new in Botswana and would have said do your thing because you have the right intention and I, I'm sure I had the same passion I have today maybe even more when I was brand new here and a big drive but I knew absolutely nothing and I think that's the big issue I, I would have blown all that money you could have given me a hundred million dollars and I would have I would have used it believing entirely that I'm doing the correct thing so number one is there needs to be yeah people need to open their ears to the people on the ground in the field and I'm not even talking about me I'm talking about the communities that live in Africa which are the ones actually having the issue with the wild animals we need to find out what are their ideas what are their solutions we can think however much we like what would be great for them if the community doesn't accept that absolutely nothing's going to happen and we're just throwing money out the wall so they yeah the big starting point are the communities whether we're talking about poaching of animals such as rhino whether we're talking about killing of lions because they're eating your cattle it's the communities where the issue starts it's the communities it doesn't matter that it's the chinese person buying the, the the product even from a rhino it's somebody in that community who knows where that rhino is for example who's going to poach it or the one who's going to kill the lion so it's uh, moving forward how is humankind or Botswana or Africa, how can the problem be resolved, mitigated, made less severe? What needs to happen? The, the biggest thing, in my opinion, is the education of our communities about actually the facts in their countries, the, what wildlife is, what a potential it means to be one of the last places to have this. The potential needs to be shown as, as an, it needs to happen, something needs to happen with these animals uh, and these areas. So education of communities starting in the most rural areas, the big cities are the same as our big cities, we don't need to worry much about them, and people they have fairly decent education. It's our, our small villages which barely have electricity or water, anything like that, is very poor communities which suffer the most from the conflict with our problem animals. and. It's the education there to, to, to get people to understand there are ways to, to farm better, to accepting the predators and the issues that are there. But we need to keep in mind many of these people have never had the opportunity to either watch National Geographic or even visit a single one of their own parks. All they know is their goats, a lion is a, just a, a horrible thing when it comes along. And it's important to, to educate people about how can we farm better but also what opportunities are there and that we help the African communities bring these opportunities but only after the community themselves decide that that's something they actually want. I think otherwise we're just running in a completely different direction. So I guess starting with the kids that are going to be the next generation having to look after these animals if we want to keep any of it around that's the the way forward. All right that sounds good and uh, good luck with your work. Thank and, you very much. Uh, See you later. Thanks for coming to class. Sounds good. Been a pleasure. Thanks. Good.